Hi guys, welcome back to Jungle Flowers Canada. My name is Gronia and thanks for joining me. So guys, this video is a very controversial subject possibly and um, it's something that I know people are kind of nervous to, to broach but I just thought that I would put my tuppence worth in as they say. So, is plant mania coming to an end? I'm calling it plant mania because I'm likening it to tulip mania from, I can't remember what century, 16th or 18th, some century long time ago. And I will actually put the year up on the screen. Now guys, there's a big huge fly flying around because I left the back door open by mistake. So I hope he doesn't distract any of you. <laughs> so those of you that have been following me for a while will know that I've always been of the opinion that you need to be very careful when you're buying expensive plants. And I have always cautioned you not to do so and certainly not to go into debt to buy plants. So there, I am definitely seeing a trend at the moment in the plant community. And it's probably not the trend that people are hoping for, but I am definitely seeing a decline in the mania that we experienced through COVID. I have a theory that there are a number of reasons why this is happening. And the first, of course, has to be that although we're still you know, dealing with COVID, we're at a different stage at the moment. People are now going back to work. You know, we don't have the same restrictions that we used to have. Social events now are, you know, starting up again. And basically people just don't have the time. So we were all locked in our homes and all we had on our hands was time. We could devote this time to our plants, even if we were working from home. We weren't commuting. Uh, we weren't rushing out to get lunch. We weren't commuting home. We weren't, you know, picking the kids up from daycare and all those things that make up a busy life. So we had plenty of time and plenty of opportunity to take care of our plants. Now people are starting to go back to work or if some people are just like, you know what, I can go on vacation now. I can go visit my friends on the weekend. I can go have a barbecue. I can go have dinner. So that time that we were allocating to our plants is now being taken up with other activities. If you have 10 or 20 plants in your house, that's no issue at all. Anybody can take care of 10 or 20 plants. When you have like 200 plants, it's a very different story. Also, if your plants have um, bugs or some sort of a disease, we all know how much work that takes. You know, you're checking for thrips, you're checking for mealybugs, you're checking for spider mites, and then you've got to treat the plants, you've got to isolate plants. There's a lot of work involved. And when you're dealing with 200 plants, it's a, it is a full-time job. It is absolutely a full-time job. So I'm going to take you back to when I believe, now I, this, I, it's just my opinion again, when I believe that the, this, this plant cycle started. I, I think, this is my belief, that around 2017, I think people were starting to get into plants and we were getting like the odd YouTuber popping up. For myself, it was two th early 2018. Um, I, like I've said before, my first love were succulents. I, you know, I loved succulents and then it became Hoyas and then it just graduated on from there. I did my first import in March 2018 from Thailand. So, um, so I, so my time to get into this was probably early 2018. Then, of course, there was 2019, it became more popular. Early 2020, it was getting even more popular. And then COVID hit. And whoa, the whole industry exploded. This is when we got into like price hiking, um, you know, uh, people buying plants, splitting them, selling them, because they saw that there was a market here and there was money to be made. And um, importing, some people that did import were bringing in those beautiful rare plants, but they were coming in at a premium. Well, we were paying a premium because we have to appreciate the work involved in shipping. Although the plants are reasonably priced on the face of it, 
when you convert it from American dollars to Canadian, or when you consider phytosanitary, when you consider shipping, all of those things, and then they have to be acclimated. Now, some people didn't bother acclimating, they just sold them straight away. Others took due diligence and acclimated and maybe held those plants for six to 12 months before they sold them on. So, you know, some of the pricing is justified. Um, all of the pricing is certainly not justified. And it really did get crazy, crazy. Now, I don't think we are alone in this. I think there was lots of other um, hobbies that did the same thing during COVID. So I wouldn't say that we're unique. And I think that they're obviously, are probably seeing the same changes to the hobby as we are, as we are experiencing now. Now again, this is, just, this is just my opinion. But when you start seeing big YouTubers selling off their, their plants, like they're selling off half of their, their collection, sometimes even more than half of their collection. And yes, you know, some are saying it's because they're moving or whatever. But not to, I'm not questioning them in any way, please. I, you know, this is not meant to be a judgmental video, but you know, there's also the knowledge that, you know what? Plants are declining in price. So if I'm going to get my money back, if you've invested a lot of money, now is the time to sell it, to sell them, I should say. So, you know, I do think that there is an element of that. And I don't think it's that they're coming from um, an untrustworthy place. But like if you paid a thousand dollars for you know a plant and there are people who've paid a thousand dollars i'm trying to think of what kind of plants like um thai constellations monstera albo and you can get some of that back you're not going to get it all back now because the prices have dropped considerably but if you can get some of that money back you know and you think okay i'm going to clear up my collection this is what i need to do then you know what that's fair you know if people if that's what people need to do that's perfectly fine i have never overspent on my plants i'm very fortunate um the most i think i've ever spent on a plant is a hundred dollars which like let's face it guys a hundred dollars is a lot of money to spend on a plant even though some of you might say it's not i think it is and um you know so i've never overspent so i'm actually very fortunate and i have done a lot of importing which has given me the opportunity to acquire plants at a more reasonable cost you know, I've run the risk of them dying, I've had to acclimate them, but for me it was something I actually enjoy doing. That for me was part of the excitement of collecting plants. So that, I do believe there is another side to this. We as human beings, I believe, are kind of always looking for something new. You know, we're looking for something that excites us, that, you know, um, grabs our attention, brings us joy, whether it be plants or it could be walking, um, hiking, uh, painting, like furniture flipping, whatever it is. There, you know, people go through different stages in life and they do different things at different times. So there's no shame in if you are now saying, you know what, plants don't bring me the joy they used to. So, you know, I'm kind of going to cut back on my collection and I'll keep a few favorites and I'm going to move on. No shame in that. That's a natural cycle of life. And I do believe there's an element of that going on at the moment also. Now, actually, I couldn't sleep last night. I was up until, oh, I was up at four o'clock and I actually took some notes. And let's see what Sleepy Grania uh, wrote down at 4 a.m. in the morning. Um, I, I wrote two pages with no glasses, so it should be fun. Um, so I'm just saying here, of course, we saw a huge spike during um, COVID and the rare plants, which were impossible to find, you know, they were, it was all over Instagram. So social media, we were seeing influencers and you saw that, you know, that unicorn plant and everybody wanted that plant. So it brought a thrill for us all. So, you know, that was a huge element and this is what drove the hobby. I think this is probably one of the main factors that drove the hobby. YouTube channels were popping up. People, like there was almost a dopamine hit from, you know, your uh, Instagram, YouTube, you know, I got caught up in it. I, I think if you watched my video uh, where I said I was no plant arena, you know, I was getting caught up in it. Like, oh, how many people watched my video? How many people liked my video? So, you know, so this all added to the hysteria <laughs> of collecting plants. There is also another very good 
factor to measure this by and that is the amount of people that are watching YouTube videos. When we were home during COVID, we were all obsessed with YouTube. I have another channel called Grania's Home and Kitchen where I do baking and I do some DIYs and my channel spiked during COVID. I, I haven't actually done a video on that in quite a long time. I think I did one video a couple of months ago, but like I haven't been putting out regular videos and my subscribership is constantly rising. Now, I'm not at a, any great rate, but I think I've like got um, 6,700 subscribers on that channel and I don't even contribute much to it simply because it was mostly to do with my mental health. So I went through a very traumatic experience in 2018 which really affected my life and I kind of lost my mojo and I just you know I, I had actually I actually thought I wasn't going to continue with my plant channel but the only reason I continued with my plant channel is because it gave me joy to share my plants with you so I kind of kept the plant channel going. The other channel, like I'm not going to say I'm never going to video. In fact, I am going to do a video soon. I am doing a furniture overhaul and I will be putting that up on that channel. But it grew without much effort. Like, I, you know, I went from a thousand subscribers to 6,000 subscribers, 6,000 subscribers almost overnight. So people were seeing this, you know, uh, YouTube channels that were already established before COVID, so that were out there in the algorithm, just like exploded. People were looking for things to watch. Yeah, I'll subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. So the views were up, the subscriptions were up, but now there's definitely a downward trend. And the reason I know that is because I have seen some of the large YouTubers, um, what does it do you post up? There's like a post you could put up saying, Guys, the views are going down on my channel. Um, I think YouTube are not promoting my channel. Make sure you hit the bell so you get notified. But I actually think that that was the beginning of the decline and we maybe didn't all realize it at that time. So I don't think it was that um, YouTube weren't notifying people about the videos. I do think people were just genu genuinely um, not as interested, didn't have the time to look like they used to. Some channels are still doing amazing. You know, and then others are steadily declining. But this is another contributor to plant mania declining. So I hope nobody is offended by this. It certainly wasn't meant to offend anybody. But what I will say to you, and like I've said to you in many other videos, don't rush out to spend a lot of money on plants right now because we haven't plateaued yet. I really believe we haven't plateaued yet. So just be cautious. If there's a plant that you really want and it's at a price that you can afford and you're like, you know what, I want to get it because I'm afraid I won't get it in the future, go ahead and buy it. Um, but even, even importing now, I would say to you, if you just want one plant, say you just want a crystallinum, it's not worth it to import that. You're going to find that on Marketplace for a, a much more affordable price. So there's certain plants I would say to you, hold off, don't export, don't import, I should say, at the moment, because you're going to find them locally at very comparable prices, maybe even less. Um, I have another prediction. I think the one plant that will possibly keep, not, not going up in price, but will keep people's interest, I think, is Hoyas. I do believe Hoyas, um, they are smaller, they're easier to manage, uh, they don't require huge space, um, like some of them are big, some of them are bigger than others, but I do think the Hoya obsession will continue. Not at the level it is probably at the moment or has been in the past. I think there always will be that following for Hoyas. At least that's my opinion. So, and that's good for me because I love Hoyas. Now, I'm not a seller, guys. I don't like cutting my plants. You know, I'll take propagations on an odd time, but I'm. But usually if I take a propagation, I keep it, or I would do it, give it away in a swap or something. I'm not one of those plant collectors that, you know, props, sells so that they can buy other plants. Uh, you know, I, I find it very hard to let them go. So for me, my collection, I've said it a couple of times, like I'm done, I'm not buying any more plants, but you know, I'm feeling good about what I have in the Aeroid family. Um, Hoyas will always pique my interest and I am expecting another import of Hoyas soon. I also think um, Scandapsis are 
you know, they're kind of the implant right now. Uh, but again, everything ebbs and flows, guys. They're going to see their day too. So um, I do have, I think, some scandapsis coming in. Um, but I think with regards to large, like, philodendrons and uh, anthuriums and stuff like that, um, I'm pretty good unless I am gifted something or I swap something. But I don't see myself spending a lot of money on those type of plants anymore. I think I, I, the ones I have have certainly not reached their potential and when they do, <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to run out of space. So I, I feel happy with my collection. Do I want to sell any of it or downsize any of it? No, I, I do not. I love my plant room, I love my greenhouse, I love all my rooms and you know, I don't feel that my plants are taking over. I, they're like a beautiful accessory in my rooms. So I don't feel like I'm in a situation where I have like way too many plants. When they get big, things might be a little bit different, but for now I have no intentions of getting rid of any of my plants. I do love them. The only time I would probably get rid of a plant is if I have duplicates or triplicates of a plant. But I do have duplicates and triplicates of a lot of plants and I still haven't got rid of them even though I've been saying I'm going to get rid of them for like months now. But you know when they start getting big I will probably take a look at that. So for me plants are definitely therapy and I've said it umpteen times. I as I say, suffered a very traumatic incident in 2018, which left me with a diagnosis of PTSD. And although you see this grania on camera, this isn't the grania that, that you know, you'd meet at a social event. I have great anxiety when I go to events, it's getting better, but I still do have anxiety and a reluctance to go into a group setting. So you see, you know, you see a very, like reasonable calm growing you when you watch my videos because that's how my plants make me feel and that's how you make me feel. I really have a connection with my subscribers. I mean the same people comment all the time that you lift me up, you lift my heart. So for me I am going to continue with my plant journey. Um, I absolutely love them. They give me something to get up to in the morning. I, you know, I love to potter around in here and, uh, you know, check them for water, check them for bugs or whatever. But I'm at a different stage of my life. I'm a grandmother now. I have more time on my hands. If you're a young parent with two or three kids and you're trying to balance daycare and you're trying to balance work and blah, 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 you're, you're at a very different stage of life to me. So I, I have time, I have time on my hands. So I can still afford that time to my plants. But as I say, that's not the case for everybody. So guys, I hope that wasn't too long winded. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, it's my opinion. It's not fact, nothing is fact here. It's just my feeling on the whole situation. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, don't forget to ask below. If you watched till the end, don't forget to put that green heart emoji in the comments. And I'd like to thank you all again for joining me. You mean the world to me. You take care and have a wonderful day.